Welcome to another edition of Brooklyn Versus, everyone. This week, we're talking about coaches and managers. I'm your host, Dr. Philly Kags. Tonight's challenges are Stephen James and Chris Cross Lazaro. Stephen James is a chump. Actually, a stunad! So please like, share, and subscribe to the Bridgeside Network, and may the best argument win. Welcome to another edition of Brooklyn Versus, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Philly Kags. To our left, I got our challengers, Chris Cross Lazaro and Stephen James. Before we get started, I just want to thank our friends at Hardcore Italians. They gave us some great merchandise, as you can see. So go over to hardcoreitalians.com and use the special promo code Brooklyn Versus. That's Brooklyn VS to get a great discount and tell them their friends at Brooklyn Versus sent you. So what we're talking about is coaches today. We're going to be talking about coaches and managers. We're going to be talking about some great coaches. We're going to talk about some not so great coaches. But in general, we're going to encompass all of them. First question is, who is the greatest coach of all time? I'm going to start with Chris. I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock, and I'm going to tell him it starts right now. 30, 29, 28. It's Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick's the best coach of all time. It's hands down. All these Super Bowls, six Super Bowls in this, in this era, it's ridiculous. In the modern era, his, his scheming, his game planning, he's in the championship games every single year. He's in the Super Bowl every other year since he's had Tom Brady. It's not Greg Popovich. It's not um, uh, Vince Lombardi. That was so long ago when football was a different game. Bill Belichick's a mastermind. Okay, good. I'm not going to lie to you, Steven. That's going to be tough to beat. But you're going to get your 30 seconds, and they start now. John Wooden, UCLA. Wooden. Come on. Wooden. Wooden. Don't interrupt my 30 seconds. What I'm saying is, is what's coaching about? It's about shepherding young minds. That's the most important thing about it. When you're a football coach, you got an offensive coordinator, you got a defense coordinator. We're talking 10 national championships. We're talking 88-game win streak, never done. We're talking about coaching Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Walton. We're talking about the greatest single coach in the history of sports, John Wooden. 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 Yeah, you are saying his name Wooden. weird. I'm not gonna. <laughs> it's like, like cool. I, I gotta no. It's coming out weird. It's wooden. I mean, I had to interrupt the 30 it's seconds. Is it coming out it's weird? Wooden. It's wooden. Why are you saying wooden? It's not wooden. I'm doing yeah, a bit. Okay. It's wooden. I'm okay. Doing a bit. Anyway, <laughs> I gotta give you. That's a pretty good rebuttal coming from Bill Belichick, and because that's you know 10 championships, you put it out there, but. Does it Seven lose, in a row. Does it lose a little luster because you're not always facing, I was facing in college, you're not always facing the best of the best. You're not necessarily doing that in the NFL either. It's true, but you're doing it you're, more any so. any given Sunday, just like in college basketball, it's one and done. All I'm saying is, any, no one else has even come close to seven straight national championships. Four is the closest. 88 games winning straight. In college basketball, how many teams do you have to get through in the March Madness tournament to even get to that point? Every a bunch of bums from the year. 70s and 60s. Please. You're a bunch of bums like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. There was two seven-footers so, in the whole right, country. Right. Tell me why. Tell me why. That's, give me your rebuttal. Tell me, that's why, tell me why it's incorrect. There's multiple things. It's, it, nothing that he said is incorrect. It's just that it takes a lot more strategy, for, which we're going to get into later, in football, scheming things than in basketball. That's number one. Number two, college versus the pros. You're, you're managing way more egos, way more you know, talent. You, you're not dealing with just kids who are going to listen. Not to mention, not it's rec true. recruiting. You're getting the best players. He got the best players all the time. <clears throat> Belichick turns... Average players into into stars. Then they go to other teams and they're like, "Oh, what happened to this guy?" It's just I, we could name the guys for for ten minutes. Okay. All right, Stephen, you brought it. That was a good answer. But well, Chris did have a good rebuttal there. If that Chris didn't give, he was close. He put on a good, compelling argument. I thought it was hands down. Once you put Belichick goes there, he had a good rebuttal after the John Wooden. A couple of things with the college. Wooden might be a better mentor. He might be a better recruiter. I know. But for coaches, X and O's, my money's always going with Bill Belichick. I mean, I and Wooden have two Belichick. extra coaches with you constantly. I gotta give you know. Bill Belichick. And, and Wooden yeah, was number one true. on a bunch of uh, yeah. Google lists. Wooden, so he probably, Google he probably pulled, it, pulled, Wooden it, pulled it right out of there. Anyway, Wooden yeah, or Wooden. He said it right. wrong. Give him so 10 let's, seconds let's back. Say, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the flip side. We talked about some great coaches, and there really are a lot of great coaches. We're going to talk about the not-so-great moments. So we're not going to harp on... Bad coaches. We're going to go to bad coaching decisions. So, 
I'm gonna start with Steven. What is the worst coaching blunder, mistake, whatever you wanna call it, that you've ever seen? Don't you take have 30 mine. seconds. Starts now. Don't take mine, don't take Pete mine. Pete Carroll! Damn it! Second and 10! Why are you throwing the football in the Super Bowl? You've got a guy. Second and goal. Second and goal, pardon. But, you know, it's. You have the great. One of the greatest running backs ever, having one of the greatest seasons for a running back ever, who is as confident as humanly possible. How. Do you not give the ball? If he, if they score there, you're, we're talking about a dynasty for Seattle. It continues on. After that, Marshawn Lynch, not a happy camper. Okay. He wants to leave. Your 30 Broke seconds is up. over. Now you're on the ropes because it sounds like that was your decision. So, coaching blunders. Steve, uh, Chris, your 30 seconds starts now. He's right. But here we go, baby. I don't give up. 1998 finals. Michael Jordan. Jerry Sloan, you don't double team Michael Jordan. Byron Russell, you put on him on the last play, you let Michael Jordan win the championship. They weren't double teaming. He takes another NBA Finals from you two years in a row. You gotta double team Michael Jordan. What are you doing, Sloan? Iconic, the most iconic moment in Jordan's history. All right, that's oh, that's it. All right, that's a little. I you could tell you were on the ropes there, Chris. Because that's a, that's a big thing, though. It it's is. a big thing. It, it, Look, it is, but I don't think anyone's going to second-guess Jerry Sloan for not double-teaming him as opposed to just looking at the greatness of Michael Jordan. I don't, think it, becomes, I don't think it becomes much of a coaching blunder as much of a greatness. Regardless of the double-team, yeah. if there's anybody who is going to make that decision a non-factor, it's Michael Jordan. Whereas you have the opportunity, the game is in hand, why don't you put... It, it's literally taking it out of your best player's hand, whereas he put his best defender, who had some success in that series, and Russell uh, guarding Michael Jordan, why wouldn't, he yeah. went against what was working in that instance, whereas Pete Carroll was just like befuddled. It, everyone sitting at the TV was going, why did you make that decision? Whereas with the Michael Jordan thing, and there was a, there was a nice push off oh, there. You got a well, rebuttal. So. Okay, the Pete Carroll decision wasn't the worst decision ever because it was. It would have been very predictable to run the ball three times. Everybody keeps saying that it was a. It was a sure thing. Touchdown if Marshall Lynch runs the ball three times, but there's no guarantees. Just because the plays before, he ran it. The fact is, the Patriots in practice had gone over that play multiple times, yeah. and they had. Um, I'm forgetting the the, the, the cornerback's name. Butler. Um, Butler. Malcolm, Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler. Yeah. In practice, they had him jump in the route mm -hmm. constantly. Great so culture. how. How is Pete Carroll? Coach. How is exactly? How is Pete Carroll to know that, you know that because they, if you they know were that he's coaching I'm gonna, that. Spygate yeah, I'm and, gonna, and knew the play. I'm gonna so, cut you off. So what you're saying is, I agree with you. But who's to say if Jerry Sloan doubles Michael, double teams Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan doesn't score anyway. Sometimes the predictable thing, they double teamed him in for Elo, and he he, he split the, the double team and hit the shot over Elo. But you gotta try something. I understand. Just like sometimes the predictable thing always isn't the wrong. I'm not thing. getting the ten points. You're not getting the ten points. Steven's getting the ten points. You're right. It's not always the predictable thing. Sometimes the predictable thing is the right thing. Yeah. So I'm gonna leave it at that. All right. It was his decision, but I had to argue. Right? That was good. That was good. There you go. Give the people something. It was, it was a nice. It was. It was a good run at it. I didn't know where you were gonna go with this it. This has been so, hotly contested. Yeah. And you said he was right too. I can't start your argument with that. <laughs> I, mean, anyway. I was pushing to. A, this has anyway. happened to me on the show before. Anyway. I was pushing to a corner and I couldn't get my way out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, Chris alluded to this a little bit. He mentioned how Bel you know, Belichick has such strategy involved. So we want to go into coaches. Which coach has the biggest influence on his or her sport? And Chris, we're gonna, you, get, you, get, you get a chance to lead off again. We're going to start. Your 30 seconds starts now. I'm sorry. It's football. It's definitely football because football is a game where the best team might not always win. In basketball... Be talent actually brings the winners. Look at the Warriors. Anybody could have coached the Warriors the dynasty and, and made it to the finals. Anybody could have coached LeBron, Eric Spolstra, David Blatt, uh, Tyron Lue. They're going to the finals. Um, Phil Jackson's a good coach, but I mean, who, anybody could have coached Pippen and Jordan. The list goes on and on. In football, you got to get, you got to have schemes. You have to have ways to stop the best receivers, the best quarterbacks. It's much more of an X's and O's chess game than any other sport. Don't tell me hockey, baseball. They do nothing. Sorry. All right. Steven, your 30 seconds starts now. I can't believe you said baseball does nothing. Nothing. Baseball is about, it's the ultimate chess game. It's about matchups. It's about knowing which left-hander goes against which right-hander. It's about knowing the statistics, knowing the analytics, when to shift, when a guy is hot, when a guy isn't, 
when to pinch hit, when to run, when to bunt. All the little things that happen in baseball fall on the skip. I don't know how, sure, football has exit. You also have a defensive coordinator. You also have a whole staff. Sure, you have base coaches, but that's it. Pitching coach, that's it. Right. My grandmother so, could make those decisions. So, uh, lefty, righty. Let me ask, has the rise of analytics and the rise of, honestly, general managers and stat and analytic guys taking over, has that diminished the role of the manager, though? Hasn't baseball? diminished it. It's changed it. You have to be smarter in the way that you implement them. Numbers are just things on a paper. Do managers make lineups anymore? I think that they take the information that's coming from the analytics. A lot of them don't create. make lineups anymore. The lineup gets given to them. How many people bunt anymore? It's very. It doesn't happen. How many as people much. steal anymore? I, it I, happens. I, I, it how happens. many people do the numbers tell you? All right, this guy. Uh, this guy's done. This guy's faced the lineup two times. Time to take him out because it's the third time going. But nothing is more important than the feel of a professional baseball manager to know when his guy is tired. It, I agree. It, there's nothing more. I important agree, than but that. Coach. have they eliminated that, or is that still alive? It's a different thing. It's still alive. It's lessened. Don't get me wrong, but it's still more of an impact on a game. Like look at Joe okay, Madden so leading a guy yeah. in. It's lessened. So now that you've admitted that, it's lessened. The impact is lessened, but it's still more than football. Still more than football? I Are you out of your mind? Let me get the rebuttal. And I'll make my rule. So. What rebuttal? It's an old man that can sit in the dugout and just like look at a piece of paper and make a decision or a lefty versus a righty. Stop giving me bad arguments because you're right with football, but I'm just going to cut them off. There's, there's, there's a the million points. different schemes. You're the points. There's Chris. a million different schemes. Chris, again, the points. Well, it's the best argument. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, but I'm dead serious. Because his first this, argument was good. He's shooting himself first, in the foot. His first argument was true. good. It's true. I don't I'm care if you say it's a bad argument. Anybody could anybody could coach baseball, manage baseball. That's true. And now we're going into the challenge. I'm going to mention some players, and you're just going to tell me the coach that is synonymous with that player. Okay. So he or she might have not coached in the whole time, but, but when they're I, most known yes, for it. Yes, when, okay. when we're going to go for a coaching player duo. Some might be giveaways, some might not be. Hey, we'll, we'll see. Forget about it. Well, exactly. All right. So he doesn't even need the buzzer in his hand. He's, okay. he's about to ask 17 questions okay. about how it There's goes. There's no questions. Yeah. And you don't have to wait for me to finish because it's only one. I'm only giving you a name. I'm not asking you a question. So we don't have to wait for you to finish. Yeah, right? you just, I'm just giving you a name. Okay. Right? You just got to wait for me to finish the name. That's it. All the right. name. The name. Okay. It's the name of the player. Name of the, the name of the coach? Name of the player. You got to give me the coach. Yeah. So you uh, got it. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a... I, I did that for you. Okay. I'm not Here gonna we go. Wayne Gretzky. I'm, we start. I'm not going to know hockey. Tim Duncan. Greg Popovich. There we go. Was he first? He was first. Yeah, you had some crack. You, you, you came in. Yeah, your strategy. So your strategy is insanely flawed. Yeah. Think about the time. Steven's like this, and you were like this. Just continue the game. Bah! Just continue the game. Okay. All right. I'm making sure you're finished with okay. what you say. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so. He just said that. Tom Brady. Bill Belichick. There we go. Okay. 1-1. One, one. It's 1-1. Nice one, He's one. changed up his strategy. I like it. You know, you, you adapt. Okay. It's like bop it. You gotta have your hands in the right places. Call Malone. Jerry Sloan. There you go. Oh, Two one. Like okay. We're... Magic Johnson. It was Steven. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, he's saying no. I, I, he got it before me. Okay. If we're going integrity. He okay. Got go it ahead. Oh, oh, go ahead. You got it before. Pat me. Riley. Pat Riley. Did any, you? Know? I don't want any so impropriety or you know tears. I did get it before. Oh, but you, right. you got. Did you know it? You, you didn't yeah, know Pat it. Riley. Come on, you didn't know it. You I didn't know it. I don't know. He was, <laughs> he was stumbling a little bit there. Was he was stumbling a I'm little bit. I'm glad that you're going with my sports. Just, just don't start hockey, okay? All right. Now, hockey's tough because I'll give him a hockey one. I no! Hockey it's not fair! Steve Eisenman. That's ridiculous. Well, you buzz then. Take a guess. <laughs> he did buzz then. All right. Come on. Elaine Vigneault. Okay. No, Scotty Bowman. There we go. It's ridiculous. Right. Me too. Scotty Bowman. Me too. Uh, well, you got to even up. You got like yeah. 16 basketball okay. questions. Sure, sure. Bill Russell. Red Auerbach. Red Auerbach. Okay. Yeah, All right. He did get it before you. Mm. I threw a one hockey. That was a basketball one, too. All right. So now we're at 3-3. Three, three. And now we got to I got to think of, uh, I got to get a more... I gotta go to some sports we haven't used. What sport haven't we used Baseball. yet? Oh, that is the sport we haven't used. And Chris is just, he doesn't know what to do because I'm, okay. So let's go. Shouldn't have opened my mouth about hockey. Mickey Mantle. 
What's that guy's name? What's that guy's name? What's that guy's name? What's that guy's name? What's that guy's oh, name? No. Oh, oh, you're both oh, no, freezing no, on it. Okay. It's, it's there. It's there. It's there. How, How much time gotta, do I have? I'm going to put a 10 second clock on it. 10, 9, oh, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Casey Stengel? Casey Stengel! Woo! Managed to pretend 51 to 60. Just so you know, I know he's not Mantle's only. He's not, I know he's not Mantle's only manager for all the people out there. He managed him for 51 to 60. He actually didn't even like, he wasn't that big a wasn't fan of Mantle. Yeah. Because he thought Mantle wasted his time. We have more, right? No, it's best of seven. I didn't know that! That's it. He won four. Uh, he won three. And the uh, victory! And he, yeah. and he gave you one too because I made a mistake with the buzzer, but he I still did. gave you the Pat Riley. Honor system. You see, honor, honor system and it comes wins. back to. The ball don't lie, folks. The ball don't lie. All right, guys. Well, for that edition of Brooklyn Versus, we're gonna maybe pick up the pieces of Chris's uh, fractured ego, I guess. But uh, we're gonna. <laughs> Thanks for watching another edition of Brooklyn Versus. All right, please like, share, and subscribe to the network, and come on back where the best argument always wins. Where you going, pal? He's gone. Hey, come back. Tonight, Stephen James got the win over Chris Cross, 30-20. Here are your Brooklyn vs. Season Standings. <laughs>